Space is big. Really, really, really big. Planets are big, stars are massive, and the distances between them are beyond stupid. If I told you that our solar system is nearly 40 trillion kilometers across, you'd probably nod your head and say something like, Yeah, I thought it would be something like that. That seems like a lot. And it is. A lot. But if you're like me, you probably zone out after the first few zeros in a number like that. So to give you an idea of how really redonkulously massive our solar system is, I'm going to take you on a journey. But first, we need to scale everything down to something that we can all appreciate. Taking inspiration from the 1972 photograph taken of the Earth by the crew of Apollo 17, I'm going to shrink our planet down to the proverbial blue marble. At this one to a billion scale, every centimetre represents 10,000 kilometres. And now I can show you the whole solar system without even leaving the county. So without further ado, let us boldly go to a football pitch. And so off to our first location and the centre of our solar system. Sun's out, guns out. Even when the Earth is scaled down to the size of a marble, the Sun is still nearly a metre and a half across. 1.3 million Earths can fit inside the Sun. In fact, this lovely big ball of plasma accounts for 99.86% of the entire solar system's mass. But no time for trivia, we must continue post haste. 55, 56, 57, 58. At around 58 million miles from the sun, or at our scale, the length of roughly five London buses, we encounter the first planet, Mercury, which compared to the sun would be the size of a tiny, teeny, weeny little pea. Coincidentally, an excellent destination for the calorie conscious, as on Mercury, you'll only be about 38% of your earthly weight. I know, I said we've got no time for trivia, but really, what is the point otherwise? Travelling another 50 million miles and we encounter the orbit of Venus, here roughly the size of a hazelnut. We are now roughly the length of a football pitch away from the Sun, and even though it's not the closest planet to the Sun, Venus is the hottest because of its thick carbon dioxide atmosphere and clouds of sulfuric acid. Temperatures on the surface are on average a blistering 468 degrees Celsius. Earth, the blue marble, third rock from the sun, home to everyone you know and everyone that's ever lived. We are now about 150 million miles from the sun, the length of 13 and a half London buses at our scale. At the size of a marble, it's all there is to show for the massive planet that you're standing on right now. Our planet has a privileged place in the solar system, falling within the so-called Goldilocks zone where it's not too hot and not too cold. And water, so critical for life as we know it, stays liquid. Any closer and it boils away, but further away and it freezes solid. Quite frankly, it's girt lush. And when the Earth is the size of a marble just 1.3 centimetres across, the Moon is like a peppercorn, about a quarter of the size. Still, the distance between them might surprise you, less like this, and more like this. And now we come to the last rocky planet of the inner solar system. Named after the Roman god of war, Mars is 80 million kilometers from the Earth, and although at this scale it's less than a centimeter across, we are now around two and a quarter football pitches away from the Sun. Despite Mars only being just less than half the size of Earth, it actually has around the same landmass. This, of course, is because 70% of the Earth is covered in water. But what it lacks in H2O, it more than makes up for in Volcano. Olympus Mons, the huge 21 kilometer high shield volcano, is the tallest in the known solar system. Well done, Mars. You rock. As we pull out on our map, we start to get a feel for the huge distances of just the inner solar system. At almost a kilometer up, the sun is barely visible, with the planets being on sub-pixel scales. Continuing our journey, we pass through the asteroid belt, a huge 150 million kilometer expanse of rocks, before arriving at our next planet, Jupiter. 780. At over three quarters of a kilometer from our sun, we have arrived at the biggest planet in the whole solar system. Here it is. Disappointed? You shouldn't be. You could still fit 1,300 Earths inside this monster. Jupiter is the first of our gas giants, with a dense atmosphere made up of hydrogen and helium, and enough gravity to keep over 60 moons in its orbit. 
We are now 780 million kilometers from the sun and the scale of the solar system relative to our planet is really apparent now. Another 650 million kilometers and we come to the second of our gas giants, Saturn. We're nearly one and a half kilometers away from our model sun on this glorious industrial estate and Saturn is the size of a shot put. Although, once you add on the magnificent rings, it more than doubles in size. It too is large enough to shepherd over 60 moons, including Titan. With a nitrogen-rich, smoggy atmosphere and methane rain, that's basically a storm of liquid farts. Another 1,440 million kilometers, and we have our next planet. Insert joke here. Double the distance again, and we've made it to your anus. Hee <laughs> hee. Or as any tired science teacher would call it, Uranus. It's cold out here, nearly 3 billion kilometers from our sun, and at our scale, we're 28 football pitches into our journey. And this gas giant is the size of a snooker ball. No, not the brown one, but a lovely shade of blue. Another cool fact about Uranus is that it's the only planet in the solar system that spins on its side. So rather than like this, it spins like this. Continuing our journey, another 1.7 billion kilometers, and we come to our next planet, and our first pub. About time. At last, our final planet. And I know what you're thinking, but I'll clear that up in a mo. It's another blue beauty. Neptune is also similar in size to a snooker ball, but we're now four and a half kilometers from our starting point, which is about four and a half billion kilometers in space. Here, the sun is barely distinguishable from other stars in the sky, and it has the strongest winds of any planet at over 2,000 kilometers an hour, all of which makes it pretty darn cold at about minus 200 degrees Celsius. But who cares? Neptune has the only moon in the solar system that orbits in the opposite direction to everything else, and that's even cooler. I never said the jokes would be any good. And now we travel another 1.5 billion kilometers to our last planet, and I use that term very, very loosely. In fact, it's just wrong. Okay, I'm nearly six billion kilometers, 60 football pitches away from our sun now, and at another pub. And it's time for the violins, please, because we have arrived at the sad, demoted dwarf planet of Pluto. Ripped of its planet status in 2006 on the basis of it not having hoovered up all the rogue rocks in its orbit, Pluto is probably the most famously defended of the dwarf planets. At our scale, it's the size of a small peppercorn. It was recently visited by the New Horizons spacecraft, which was ironically launched the same year as poor Pluto was downgraded. Photos sent back from a flyby revealed a big icy heart covering one side of the dwarf planet. Bet you feel guilty now, eh? International Astronomical Union. Yeah. Cheers. But we're not finished there. There's one more place to visit before I can go home. Welcome to Eris. Pluto is by no means the only dwarf planet. It's certainly not the furthest from the sun. It's not even the biggest. Eris orbits a staggering 14 billion kilometers out from the center of the solar system. That's the length of more than 300 football pitches at our scale. And still, it's only the size of a peppercorn. In fact, it's so far away that my budget didn't stretch to get there. Oh, sorry. Now at almost 50 kilometers from the Earth, we can really appreciate our truly vast solar system. At this height, we can't even see individual houses, let alone the peppercorn-sized Eris or even Jupiter at the size of a grapefruit. It really is mind-boggling, but I just hope that it goes some way to helping you realize just how stupidly massive our solar system really is. And if it doesn't, well, I'm not doing it again. However, I will be reading all your fantastic comments filled with even more juicy planetary trivia that I hope you are going to leave below. Oh, and as always, don't forget to subscribe for more science videos.